Hi, everybody, and welcome to the fourth annual Moonshot Adventures Showcase. My name is Jasmine Massey. My pronouns are she, her. I am a cohort for a fellow and one of your MCs tonight. My venture is Explore Accelerated Academy, a high school where students complete apprenticeships as well as top tier academics. Hey, folks, my name is Tony Lucero. My pronouns are he, him, and I'm also a cohort for fellow and your other MC. My venture is First to Lead, a program that empowers first students to have successful careers in business and as authentic leaders. Before we get started, um, just a quick note. Uh, truth and acknowledgement are critical to building mutual respect and connection across all barriers of heritage and difference. We begin this effort to acknowledge what has been buried by honoring the truth. In Colorado, we stand on the ancestral lands of the Arapaho, Cheyenne, Ute, Apache, Pueblo, and Shoshone people. We pay respects to their elders past and present. Please take a moment to consider the many legacies of violence, displacement, migration, and settlement that bring us together here in Colorado. For those of you that are new to Moonshot, each year, Moonshot hosts the showcase, this showcase event. For the purpose of a showcase is to bring together our Moonshot family and community and to celebrate the amazing work and leadership of the current cohort. This is the fourth annual showcase event featuring 19 leaders in cohort four. This is our biggest cohort yet. While we typically celebrate showcase in person because of, well, you know, the pandemic, this will be the first ever virtual showcase. And we're so excited that each of you are a part of this experience with us here tonight on Remote and those joining us via live stream. Tonight, will you, you will get the opportunity to hear fellows, share their ideas about programs or schools that they have designed to change outcomes for students of color in the Metro Denver area. And you know, even though we can't be here in person, we hope that this event will still allow you to connect with others. If you registered for the event, you should have received a program in the mail, but don't worry, if you don't have the program, check your inbox for our PDF version, or you can click the link that Sasha just put in the chat. And don't worry, we'll have plenty of time to network. And now that we got all the quirks of the microphone my, and camera, all that, it'll be great. During our network time, you can go to any table by double clicking on an open seat at that table. Have your camera and microphone on, and you'll be able to join in on the conversation. All right, all right, all right, enough with the instructions. Let's get the show rolling. Jasmine, go ahead and kick us off. Well, I am excited to do this. I have the honor of introducing someone very special. This woman is the reason we are all here this evening. She not only is the founder of Moonshot Adventures, but her experiences in rethinking and reimagining schools is the reason we're all able to come together with our different ideas of programs and schools and present them here to you tonight. Please give a warm welcome to an exciting welcome to Christine DeLeon, AKA CDL. Woo. <laughs> thanks, thanks for the applause, Tony. Uh, thanks, Jasmine. As, as, and as Jasmine mentioned, I've had the good fortune of leading Moonshot Adventures over the past five years. And many of you know, I'll be transitioning over to the WEND Collective starting in the new year. So as I reflected on what to say tonight, I have to be totally honest, I thought about where I was about six or seven years ago, and I was in a place where I honestly questioned my own worth. I wasn't exactly crushing it at my jobs, and I really started to question whether I was capable of bringing anything really worthwhile into the world. And then I started listening to my own voice and started surrounding myself with a community of people who cared deeply about me. And one of those people, by the way, is Sharon Bossier, who you'll hear from shortly. So over the last few years, I took the leap, jumping in to lead with a set of values important to me, with the conviction to demonstrate that there were indeed underrepresented leaders from this community who had the inherent potential to change the world and hadn't been given access to do that. So I got to building. Moonshot started with a lot of community building between Startup Weekend, EDU, The Ed Garage, and Talk to Action before it ever became known for its fellowship. And now the organization is four cohorts in, 
nearly 70 fellows strong and about to recruit its fifth. We have experts and micro grants for our alumni and for the first time, we will be able to give our fellows a full-time residency where they'll be able to work on their ventures as their full-time job. This is all made possible by a small and mighty team and hundreds of supporters like all of you. What a real gift you have given me. And so when I look at these last few years, there are many of you to thank. For those of you who took a chance on us in the early years, thank you. With no track record and a logo made on PowerPoint, you believed in our potential. And for those of you who are taking a chance on us now, listening to us when we say that multi-year gifts will give us the ability to make the long-term to uh, long-term commitments to our leaders that they deserve, we are forever grateful. And for anyone who ever wonders about the possibility of building a tight-knit community of leaders and entrepreneurs in a virtual setting, I encourage you to get to know the Moonshot team, including VJ, Sasha, and Kat, and Alex. They've held this group of leaders to high standards and shown them what it's like to lead with love at the center. To all of our Moonshot fellows and alumni, and truly to all of you here tonight, I look to you to lead us into the future. This work is hard, but you are so capable and so worthy. Lift each other up and be the community for each other that allows each of you to live in your own values and take bold leaps into the future. To Kat, our Chief Program Officer and our now interim CEO, who left a conference and took a lift all the way to a coffee shop that was 30 seconds from my house. I'm grateful to her grilling me and for taking a chance on this organization. Since she joined, I've entrusted her with the heart of Moonshot. Taking ownership of our fellowship program, building out our alumni services and developing and coaching this incredible team. Kat is a true force of nature. She's a quick learner, builds community like no one I have ever seen, deeply lives out the values of Moonshot in every way possible and treats everyone she meets with love and respect. I couldn't be more grateful to her for stepping into the role of interim CEO. As you all can imagine, it's hard to let go of building something, but when I know it's in such capable hands, the legacy of this organization is not built on the contributions of one person, but built on the work of our team, our fellows, and all of you. I can't wait to see where Moonshot goes. Thank you for the incredible honor of allowing me to lead this organization, and I'm excited to share this very virtual evening with you. With that, I'll to my very good colleague and friend and interim CEO, Kat Ling. Thanks, CDL. And damn, I think everybody's crying now. Um, yeah, I wasn't ready when I uh, said I was going to go after CDL. Uh, but good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Kat Ling, and I can't express how truly honored I am to step into the extremely large shoes of CDL, even in the short term. Um, and I want to start by thanking, as I th see the chat blowing up with love for CDL, to thank CDL and our board of directors for their incredible leadership in building up this organization from a one-person uh, show uh, back in 2016 to now a five-person team serving over 70 fellows and reaching thousands of students every day in Metro Denver. Cohort 4, I am so proud of you. You have accomplished so much in these past five months. Yes, it's only been five months, even though it feels like probably five years. And you've shown that we can create true community and lasting friendships in a virtual setting, perhaps especially when mimosas are involved. Uh, and as CDL mentioned, I deeply believe that the ideas that you're about to share with the community tonight will inspire all of us that change is possible when we pursue it together. Now, the magic of cohort four would not be possible without our fellows, friends, and family members, the ultimate moonshot supporters, and the people who let cohort four sit on Zoom for hours and hours of long nights and weekends while y'all took care of the kids, the house, the food, the pets, and more. So to all of that, thank you. I also want to thank our event sponsors, the Carson Foundation, Rooted, and Klein Alvarado VO PC 
for making it possible for us to host a showcase event in this virtual environment. Your support of this event reminds us that this work is a community effort, and we can all play a role in supporting leaders who share the identities with the students they serve. And for the people who are listed and have been listed in our program as the contributors to our fellows, we are all better for the perspective and the expertise that you've shared with our fellows in cohort four, in cohorts one through three, and hopefully beyond. At this time, I want to invite the Moonshot team onto video, um, the rest of the Moonshot team, Alex, Vijay, and Sasha, so I can thank them and y'all can put some faces to names of the folks whose hard work also created this event. Yay, thanks, Sash, Vijay, Alex, all right. So I could talk for truly an hour thanking this amazing team, but just to give y'all a glimpse into the work that made tonight possible, Sasha, thank you for now being our resident Remo expert. Uh, in managing all things logistics. And somehow, y'all, an online virtual event has even more logistics than an in-person event. Alex, for organizing, assembling, and shipping all of the showcase celebration kits, of which we had, I believe, 120 or so that Alex sent out to y'all with love. And Vijay, for all of the coaching, the one-on-one -on -one support, the tough love, and the nurturing that you've given to our fellows in ensuring that they're ready for tonight. A huge, awkward, somewhat silent applause that comes from just me, but know that everyone else is clapping elsewhere. Thank you, team. All right, y'all. So now I'm excited to introduce our keynote speaker for the evening. And I cannot overemphasize my admiration and gratitude for this person and the work that they do. Sharonda Bassier is the interim CEO of Education Leaders of Color, or EDLOC which is dedicated to elevating the leadership, voices, and influence of people of color in education and finding a third way for creating transformational change. From her unwavering support and mentorship to CDL in Moonshot's early years, to bringing some of the best entrepreneurs and school leaders of color to every cohort of Moonshot Fellows, to meeting and sharing wisdom with all of our cohorts, Sharonda and Edlock have been true partners to us in this work and they are instrumental to the success that Moonshot has seen over the last four years. And because I know that y'all are gonna be looking to hear more from Sharonda after you listen to her talk tonight, she was interviewed by the New York Times Daily, The Daily Podcast on her experience as a longtime protester and activist for Black Lives Matter and racial justice. So without further ado, and since we can't hear or see y'all technically, I'll just imagine everyone clapping in their living rooms, Welcome, Sharonda Vassier. Thanks, Kat. Um, I appreciate it. I am so excited to be here tonight and hope that you all are having a great time. Thanks for letting me bounce around uh, in your rooms earlier. Please, please, please engage me in the chat tonight um, because I can't see you. <laughs> uh, and so to get us started, I'd love to hear a little bit about how you're feeling right now. So if you could take just a moment and drop in like a quick reflection uh, in the chat, that would be that would be great. And it would mean a lot to me. I only have five minutes, uh, so I'm hoping for a lot of engagement in the chat that allows me to follow up with you all um, later. It's a little awkward to not be able to see you. Uh, and so so I um, have been thinking a lot about the fact that we talk about the lack of cultural diversity in tech, and uh, it's clear from this platform that no one from a call and response culture was involved in the development uh, where you can't see the audience, right, because we like to do the like, y'all there? Yes. Uh, so as you all are preparing the young people you serve uh, to solve the challenges we face as a society, please make sure that someone is focused on solving this one. Yes, search engine algorithms are racist, and yes, Yes, facial recognition software still can't tell people of color apart. Yes, clean water is increasingly scarce, but not being able to see and interact with the audience while you're speaking is a big problem, and we need our best and brightest on that. Um, anyway, thanks uh, again, Kat and CDL and to the Moonshot Ed team uh, for having me tonight and inviting me to share space with, with each of you. Uh, my name is Sharon DeBossier, and I am the founding deputy director and current interim CEO of Education Leaders of Color, or EDLOC. Uh, as Kat mentioned, I am an organizer, I am an activist, and I am an educator. Um, I am really excited to be here with you. Um, I believe deeply in CDL and her leadership, and it's been so wonderful, so beautiful to see this community grow over the past few years. 
But I will be honest with you that I really did struggle with what to say to you tonight. Um, in the midst of my own grief and in a year that has taken so much from all of us, in a year that has demanded so much of educators, I didn't know what I would say that would feel good, that would feel motivating, that would feel inspirational. And so as I often do in these moments, as CDL said she does in these moments, as I know many of you do, I turned to my community. And I had a conversation uh, with a friend and, and a fellow activist, Brittany Packnett Cunningham, who I'm sure many of you know. And I said to her, I said, girl, I just, I feel like I'm talking to a group of people who are running into a burning building and I don't even have water to offer. All I have is a high five. And Brittany said something to me that was actually very, very helpful. She said, validate that the building is burning and tell them that they're damn heroes for choosing to run toward the danger. That's superhero work. And Brittany is right. You all are superheroes. You are choosing to run toward the danger. You are choosing to attempt the impossible. And I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you for every time that you pushed past a no in defense of your dream to serve young people. I want to say thank you for believing in and fighting for justice. I want to say thank you for stepping up to provide meaningful, life-changing opportunities for young people like me. And thank you, of course, in advance for educating the young person who will develop the tech platform that allows me to be on stage and see you at the same time. I want you to know though that my expressions of gratitude are more than just work, or sorry, words, excuse me, more than just words. I want you to know that in me and in the Edlock community, you have a friend, you have a co-conspirator, you have an advocate for you and for your work. I want you to know that when people say that you'll never close the achievement gap until you solve for poverty, that we have a community of leaders who have proven otherwise and they have your back. I want you to know that when people question the rigor of the curricula you offer your students because they center the experiences of the historically marginalized, that we have researchers in our network who will be ready to offer data in support of your decisions. I want you to know that when people tell you that you should not or cannot care about the families you serve facing hunger, eviction, and illness, we have a community of donors and policymakers who will say otherwise and who will help marshal the resources to back you up. I want you to know that you are not alone. Yes, you are attempting to do the impossible. You are literally fighting to bend the moral arc of the universe more quickly towards justice. Yes, you are running towards the danger, but you are not alone. If 2020 has taught me anything, it is that the impossible is possible with community. And that is what Moonshot and tonight are all about community. I hope you leave here tonight feeling the love and support of this community. I hope you leave here tonight feeling every bit of the superhero you are. And I hope you leave here tonight knowing that as you attempt the impossible, this community has your back. I want you to know that you are not alone. Thank you. And we wanna say thank you to you, Sharonda. I could, let's extend this event 
two hours more just so we can hear you uh, speak more about everything you've done. Thank you so much for sharing your passion and your wisdom with us this evening. Your dedication to community, activism for racial justice, and commitment to elevating educational leaders of color are unparalleled and no doubt they serve as a compass for the work many of us want to accomplish. The building is burning, but you've definitely given us water. Next up, I am so excited to share the mic with another voice and inspiring leader from cohort four. Rico Gomez is a Denver native, a DPS graduate, and part of the first class to graduate from Coons Miller Creative Arts Academy. Rico is currently a teacher at KIPP Northeast Denver Leadership Academy, where he designs and facilitates a social justice program for high school students. Rico embodies the spirit of Moonshot Adventures Fellowship, and I know that every week he's going to push my thinking, but he's also going to question those assumptions that guide current educational practices. And so I'm thrilled to invite our speaker, Rico Gomez, to the stage. Uh, thank you, Tony and Jasmine. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for being here, uh, for giving your time to hear about the work that we're doing and for being a part of the Moonshot family of supporters. My name is Rico Gomez. My pronouns are he, him, his. So this year has clearly been a long and difficult journey for everyone in this virtual room, including the Moonshot family. But still, our cohort has built a strong and special bond, a bond where everyone has each other's back where we don't hes hesitate to give the occasional check-in when we sense something is wrong, where we can feel free to say things honestly, AKA say it ugly, and even more free to indulge in some virtual mimosas. This cohort makes me hopeful for the future of education in Denver, Aurora, and Colorado at large. I wanna start by rewinding back to my application for Moonshot. When you apply, you submit a video that explains what drives you. In my video, I describe my own educational journey in Denver as one that's fortunate and responsive. I talked about how I know the power of a responsive education firsthand and that I wanted to join Moonshot because it works to create similarly responsive experiences for students, experiences that are designed by and with the communities that we aim to impact. In the application video, I described how my mom, Dina, who's here today, hi mom, <laughs> As a single mom, I always prioritized mine and my sister's education. She wanted it to be a source of stability, even if much else wasn't stable. We moved about nine times around the city, which is why I struggle to answer the question when folks ask, well, part of the city are you from? Usually I pridefully answer Southwest, not only because it's the best side of town, but also because it's where my primary and secondary schools were located, each of which was responsive to me as a learner. I was fortunate enough to have attended Denison Montessori School in Southwest Denver, where I first explored my creative passions and got to choose how to spend my time and practice independence from a young age. Whether this was working on my zoology project where I drew animals or learning how to make pesto with basil fresh from the outside garden, it was responsive to me as a learner. I was then fortunate enough to be part of Coons Miller Creative Arts Academy's first graduating class, a small community working to build a legacy together. At KCAA, I built on my passions for creativity by participating in an arts infused curriculum and learning graphic design skills that I use to this day. I was fortunate to attend Regis University in North Denver. I moved from the Southwest, the best part. Regis's social justice mission and tight knit community enabled me to gain leadership experience and the language and skills necessary to build a social justice program at KIPP Northeast Denver Leadership Academy. Go Jaguars. All said, I was fortunate that my mom, with the help of my grandparents and my auntie, who's also here, placed such an emphasis on my education and kept it consistent for me despite the turbulence. I was fortunate to have access to these schools that were all responsive to who I was holistically. Put simply, I was fortunate to get the rest responsive education that I did. But it doesn't have to be that a student can have such a tailored and meaningful education experience simply because a particular set of circumstances worked in their favor. It's hard but entirely possible to ensure that every student, regardless of how fortunate they are, can have such a trajectory. 
And that's exactly why I'm hopeful. Moonshot, our cohort, and many of you are working to eliminate the, are, are working to make this the norm, not the exception. We're working to eliminate good fortune from the equation and making responsiveness the standard. The leaders that you'll hear from today are all people of color, women, or LGBTQ. These people from the communities they aim to serve are designing these programs and schools for and with their communities, with our young people. My venture, Meta Academy, has a similar aim, to responsively give young people the authentic leadership skills and sociocultural knowledge to lead for and with their communities by being teachers, innovators, and leaders during high school, college, and career. They will join the table, invite others, or maybe break it and make a whole new one. As someone born and raised in Denver, as someone who understands the power of a responsive education, I'm hopeful for the future of education here and beyond. And I can't wait to get to work with you all. I'm sure you'll feel the same exact way after hearing from our fellows. Thank you very much. Oh my goodness, that was fantastic. And this is why we picked Rico to be our speaker to represent cohort four. You all may think that's just his presentation voice. Every time he speaks, it is what it are they are wise words, and we all are in just disbelief. So thank you, Rico, for representing our cohort and sharing your wisdom. We are so proud to be a part of cohort four with you. I know there are tears and applause and all of that going on right now. All right, and so here we are. Now's the time to hear from each one of our fellows in Moonshot about their venture. And so each fellow will briefly speak about their amazing work. And trust me, we've been working on these one minute pitches over and over with so many run throughs and even a stopwatch in hand. So feel free to follow along in your program where you will find information about each one of the ventures. Now, if you have questions and you're like, man, I just really want to know more about that program at school. Hold on to them for now. There will be plenty of time to ask more questions during the network portion of our evening. All right, and so during this portion of the event, you can just sit back, relax, and listen. You're welcome to celebrate our fellows in the chat, and I know you've all been doing that, so I don't think I have to give you that instruction. And so now we're excited to kick off our pitches. First up, Luis Antezana. Bowtie check. Thank you, hosts. My name is Luis Antesana. I was a high school senior. Uh, when I was a high school senior, I found out I was undocumented, but I was lucky. Out of over 100 applicants, I was one of two students who received a full ride scholarship to Cal State Los Angeles. I was lucky. 98 or not. I believe that every high school graduate, regardless of immigration status, should have access to upward economic mobility. This is why I created Juntos to College. Juntos means together a mobile app that helps undocumented students earn income legally through entrepreneurship, all from the palm of their hands. But Juntos to College is more than an app. It's a movement to increase housing access, home ownership, and reclamation of the land while decreasing the racial income gaps that still exist today. It's a movement so today's immigrant children become tomorrow's industry leaders who continue to pay it forward because we give them the platform to full, fulfill their potential. And if you believe in this movement, I ask you, please consider investing. Check us out and sign up for our newsletter at juntostocollege.com. Thank you. And that's only the first pitch. Uh, we still have a few more that are coming up. And of course, you know, this is Zoom, so. All right, Joyelle. Hello, everyone. My name is Joyelle Naomi. And I am a divorced, working, homeschooling mom of two children. You know, we have homeschooled through some really tough circumstances. And in my efforts to find spaces of support and belonging, I found that many homeschooling families of color were also experiencing tremendous barriers, such as domestic violence, mental health issues, financial crises that made it difficult, if not impossible, to sustain a homeschool. We all needed more than just academic support, but also equitable whole family support. 
My venture, Denver Independent School, is a liberated education space that functions as a broker of equity, connecting families with resource-rich communities, programming, uh, experiences that leverage agency in home-based education. So what do we need? We need you. We need strategic planning advisors, board members that are active and well-connected, community partners, investors in both time and money, as we all work together to see every family rich in ability currency, or in other words, the financial and social capital to build sustainable homeschools. If you'd like to partner with us, you can contact me at info at denverindependentschool.org. Thank you for being here. Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Joanne Liu. When I was in high school, I was one out of two Asian girls in my class. At school, I felt a sense of shame because I knew I was different and desperately wanted to belong. In Denver Public Schools, Asian Pacific Islander girls make up 2% of the K-12 student population, while API teachers and school administrators make up 1% of DPS staff. How can we ensure that our API girls have role models who will not only inspire them, but also help them envision their potential for success? As a former secondary school teacher and administrator, and now, as a mother of a Chinese American girl, my mission is to empower API middle school girls through my venture, Asian Girls Ignite. We are a community of API girls and women focused on exploring our identities, elevating our voices, and caring for our mental health through the power of storytelling. Asian Girls Ignite needs connections to students, schools, and community organizations. That's where you come in. Help me ensure that Colorado API girls have a different experience and grow up feeling that they matter. Thank you. I remember pulling open the door and walking out to a campus that was just becoming familiar, an envelope in my hand with the university loan details stuck inside. I left the financial aid department at University of Oregon and just signed an emergency loan to make it through my spring semester of my freshman year. You see, as a first-gen student, I thought the finish line was getting into college, but like 25% of first-gen students of color wouldn't be viable for me past freshman year. I'm Tony Lucero, a DPS first-gen student, and my venture, First to Lead, seeks to support first-generation college goers with college credit earning workshops that activate our backgrounds and identities, help students navigate the college application and affordability process, and receive holistic support from paid internships and mentorships. But this work involves all of us, and we need you to elevate the next generation of business leaders, entrepreneurs, and creators of market opportunities that do not yet exist. Join me to take action to elevate our next generation. Reach out to me at tonylucero at gmail.com or connect with me using my social media links in my Remo profile. Thank you. Hi, my name is Hannah Franzblau. I am the school social worker at Val Verde Elementary School in Southwest Denver, and I'm the founder of Val Verde Childhood Development Center. Val Verde means Green Valley in Spanish. Today, too much of our neighborhood is an industrial area, a food desert without a library or a rec center. It is also a child care. These realities are nothing more than the outcome of generational inequities for Val Verde families. I know that equity in education begins at birth and our families in Valverde deserve much more than this. That's why we're creating what we call the VCDC. We are building it to be a child care center rooted in the joy, connection, and curiosity of our littlest ones. Through a warm environment, a curriculum that mirrors the diversity of our families, a beautiful outdoor space, and social emotional learning that is based in play, our three-year-old graduates will be ready for the next step in their educational journeys. With your help, we will open the VCDC in the fall of 2022 in our beautiful Green Valley. If you are an interested family, an educator, or community partner, please join our community de design team and sign up for our newsletter at vcdcdenver.org. And thanks for being here tonight. Good evening. I am Rowena Capuno proud daughter of Filipino immigrants and high school teacher of 12 years. As a person of color and an educator, I know firsthand the battle of imposter syndrome that our students face as they navigate their education, and especially as they enter college and or career. 
My last name, Kapuno, means both you are a tree or you are full. And most recently, I learned it also means fellow leader. It is the inspiration for the Tree Collective, a high school arts program that is rooted in decolonization and re-indigenization through community circles, meditation, creative workshops, and a showcase event. I have learned how I have been colonized and how connecting back with self, intuition, ancestors, and community is essential to reclaiming one's identity and power. That is the work we do at the Tree Collective, and we need your help to water the seeds and grow our organization. We are looking for students, teaching artists, and supporters who would love to partner with us. Let's connect. Hello, or should I say bonsoir? My name is Dr. Anne Kiki. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I noticed that young Africans in a diaspora seem to be confused about the identity because they seem to be caught up between two cultures that clash constantly. I was one of them. And I know how confusing and depressing that can feel to merge African and American cultures. My venture is called African Youth Center, in short, AYC. The vision is to create a safe place for second generation African immigrants in Aurora, Colorado, between the ages of 10 to 18. There, they can be coached to explore themselves, affirm their identity, walk into their purpose, so they can positively impact the world around them. Are you a successful entrepreneur? An artist, a coach, a motivational speaker, politician, even a philanthropist, and are passionate about positively impacting people's lives, then I need you in this venture. Please reach out to me so together we can change the lives of our youth one at a time. Merci. Hi, I'm Olivia Gardner. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I am here because I was the 11 year old black girl who reached for spaces where I could learn about myself and my joy and I couldn't find it. The education system just asked me to survive. Despite my inherent worth and the inherent worth of millions of black, indigenous and brown kids, the systems we all move through mark these bodies as worthless. So I ask you to wonder, when was the first time you felt like you were valuable? When was the first time you celebrated your joy? Transformative Teach will exist both as a youth resource hub and network for adults to disrupt the school to prison pipeline. Educator cohort model seek to do workshops and projects that explore the roots of white supremacy and evaluate place-based schools and policy. With youth-led partnerships, youth explore their healing through resources and space. Now it is time for you, for our community to join us. Who are the five educators and or five youth you know who need to be at our next pop-up. Contact me at oliviatransformativeteach.com and let's connect. Thank you. Hello, Makadini. My name is Tatenda Blessing Muchiriri. I'm an emerging leader teacher with the Wildflower Foundation. I've been teaching Montessori for over 12 years all over the world in different Montessori settings. And through my work, I've observed that Montessori has become an education for the affluent, people with access and plenty. Yet I know Montessori is nothing but the story of my people, a return to all cultures, indigenous, ancient wisdom, a commit-oriented learning that doesn't discriminate against your skin color or even your socioeconomic situation. My venture, Flame Lily Montessori School, a school for two-year-olds to six-year-old black and brown children in Aurora, Denver, seek to uh, provide a home space where our children can learn and thrive through an anti-bias, anti-racist curriculum. Do you see an investment in our young children centered on identity learning as having a huge impact on their trajectory? If so, will you join Flam Lily Montessori School to open our doors to the children of the global majority in August of 2021? Thank you. All right, thank you to Tenda and the rest of the first half of this cohort. Now I actually wanna invite us all up. Everyone who just gave their pitch, come up on stage. 
unmute, turn on your camera. We owe you a round of applause. These are amazing ventures. They're gonna serve so many students in Metro Denver. All right, folks, let's do it. Round of applause. <laughs> And this is just half of the amazing people that interact with, dialogue with, and build ventures with every week. Um, so thank you all so much. And now, Jasmine, if you'd like to step up on the stage, and fellows, we'll have you uh, step off for now. Just once again, thank you so much to the first half of Cohort 4. A reminder that you can follow along in the program. And if you don't have a mailed copy, don't worry. Sasha is going to put the link in the chat again for the virtual program. And so now let's hear the second half of our fellow pitches. Kicking us off for the second half, you might recognize this guy, it's Rico Gomez. Okay, mic on. All right, thanks again, Tony. It's no secret that we struggle to hire teachers, principals, and other education leaders of color. Here in DPS, there are 75% students of color, but 72% white teachers. I'm Rico Gomez, and while I'm tired of institutions and society being designed and run by people who don't look like me, I'm hopeful that we can change it. That's why I want to found Meta Academy, an organizational and educational leadership school. At Meta, by practicing metacognition, students constantly explore three questions as they learn in project-based and experiential ways. What am I learning? How am I learning? And going forward, what am I going to do about it? By doing so, students are equipped with the communication analytical and critical thinking skills that will enable them to lead now and going forward. Students will also take classes in social justice, communication, management and entrepreneurship, design, and teaching to become the leaders, innovators, and educators of today and tomorrow. Bring your expertise, talents, or financial resources to Meta to get young people from our communities leading for and with our communities. Visit Meta Schools Org. Thank you. These transitions. Good evening, everyone. My name is Oliver Thornton. And like, <laughs> and like many of you and my former classmates, students, and friends, the United States public education system once made me believe that I was a st statistic. When I was in second grade, I remember being told that a quarter of you would go to college, half of you would go graduate high school and never leave the city, while the rest of you will end up dead, in jail, or on the street. After not having my needs met as a student and not being able to meet the needs of every student as an educator due to the original design of education, I realized that it's time to dismantle the system. Our community needs a school that will produce future change agents that will disrupt, challenge, and improve the status quo. This is the essence of IROC Academy, a school that will put the power back into the hands of the community and prepare inner city students to become our next world leaders, entrepreneurs, and community advocates. We are currently recruiting interested students, families, and educators to work collaboratively on our community design team and serve as elected members on our board. For anyone you know is interested in joining our school family, let's connect and start a movement. Thank you. Hi, my name is Megan Casimer, and a child who is family to me is incarcerated. The last time he was free, he was 12, and his voice hadn't even changed yet. He's 16 now, and he sounds like a different person. He's growing up in jail and thriving in spite of the system. Music, art, and writing have helped him build bonds with other young men, process his journey, and stay connected to his friends and his outside community. At Words Beyond Walls, we elevate the voices of young folks aged 12 to 18 who are incarcerated. We partner with on-site schools to lead community-led, arts-based workshop series. Our students co-create their experience, tell their own stories, and bear witness to the struggles and triumphs of others. Our creators produce and share work that speaks to their journeys and helps them remain integrated in their outside communities. Our facilitators are young adults with justice system experience healing, dreaming, and building together. We need your help. For every $100 we raise, we can sponsor two new students to enter our program, elevate their voices, and publish their work to an audience of their choosing, because everyone's voice deserves to be heard loud 
and true. Good evening and greetings. My name is Kenyatta Jackson. Thank you so much for joining us. Remembrance Youth is a school-based mindfulness program that's the brainchild of my lifelong passion for service and my personal experience with yoga and its power as a tool for liberation. I am a six-year certified, five-time certified yoga studio owner. Through the power of yoga, I've overcome oppression, leveraged my identities as an asset, and been able to forge a path to freedom, spiritually, economically, and most important, communally. Remembrance Youth combines my decade of experience in the education field with the power of yoga through experienced and evidence-based practices to create and furnish a place for students and families in the Denver metro area to name, kill, and transform trauma. Please join us as a program sponsor or help us launch our inaugural teacher training. You can find more information at remembrancewellnessinyoga.com. Thank you. Hey, Lovely. The worst sentence to come out of 2020, you're on mute. I apologize. Good evening and welcome everyone. My name is Taylor Lawley and my pronouns are he, him, his. My venture is called Freedom Minds and we'll reimagine the way we think about boarding school. Did you know that the boarding school model, which is now seemingly reserved for the white, wealthy and privileged was once a more diverse space? Boarding schools are able to provide security, a sense of belonging and more opportunities to develop one's identity. Research shows that since the 70s, there has been a 96% decrease in the number of historically black boarding schools across the nation. Freedom Minds is working to help bridge this gap by creating a community boarding charter school for ninth through 12th grade black and brown students that will focus on a holistic social, emotional and academic learning model. We are currently looking for community members to help us bring this vision to life. If you want way, please contact me at taylor at freedomminds.org. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jasmine Massey. I am a wife, mother, and a Black educator. As a Black educator, I've experienced firsthand the disparities in Black and Brown communities surrounding education. In my time in this field, I have figured out what's missing in our schools, and that's exploration. That's when the idea of Explore Accelerate Academy came to life. Instead of students sitting in traditional classes, our students will intern with engineers, participate in board meetings, and conduct pre-ops with nurses, while also taking necessary coursework online and in person. Explore is an apprenticeship and integrated school where students complete rigorous academics as well as apprenticeships in the field of their choice. So I want you to go out and find that kid that's a hidden gem in your community that may not, not know exactly what they want after high school, but has a goal-driven growth mindset and is a, it, and is a full, full of leadership potential. Let them know that Explore Accelerated Academy is for them. Thank you, and I cannot wait to connect with you all tonight. Hey, everybody. Um, I just want to say really quick before I start, I love the energy in the chat, and I really appreciate y'all being here. So um, keep it up. I love that. It's really helping me vibe out. So um, my venture is called the Youth Action Launchpad, and it was born out of necessity, passion, and failure. It was created as I direct result of the lack of equitable and diverse educational and experiential learning opportunities for BIPOC youth. We believe the students are the social change they wish to see. The core focus areas of our launch pad are racial identity development, academic and career efficacy, and civic literacy and engagement. We offer BIPOC-centered civics content, as well as direct access to student desired civic engagement and professional develop development opportunities. Our program culminates in the Youth Justice Challenge, which is a youth participatory action research challenge. 
that seeks to give youth an opportunity to create and implement solutions to the problems they see in their community. I believe your help as a partner and community member, and I need you to help me provide access to knowledge and opportunities that marginalized communities have been historically left out of. You're welcome and encouraged to offer your time, expertise, and economic support in any capacity that you can. It's time to give back because learning should not be exclusive and because change is fueled by passion, which is created through exploration and failure. So think about that then think about your own dreams and allow yourself to be curious enough to come check out what we do. Good evening, I'm Ellie Edelman, founder and director of the Village Institute, where we're working across generations to nurture the inherent power of refugee and immigrant families. As a descendant of Jewish immigrants fleeing Eastern Europe, I saw my own courageous great grandmother in the refugee women I worked with as a trauma therapist and a case manager. With my family and theirs in mind, we set out together to build a live, learn, work center in Aurora focused on intergenerational wealth and intergenerational healing. As part of our holistic approach, we're building the Little Village, a diverse by design early learning program where kids can begin exploring their family history and their own identities from age two and refugee women lead the education of Colorado's youngest students. Everyone gets a chance to be a teacher and a learner every day because being celebrated who you are and where you're going is healing too. Right now, we're looking for other educators to help us craft our culturally and developmentally responsive curriculum. We're also looking for board members to support both our adult education and our ECE teams. Does that sound like you? Reach out. Hi everyone, my name is Frida Falkir Freda. Picture this, it's 2016, you're an undocumented student at a white private university. You've got midterms coming up, but all you can focus is on the elections, the unknown, the separation of your family and going to class, knowing that your peers have wit and hate speech across campus. But you still go to class. You take your exams and continue to move forward, not letting anyone know the weight that you carry. That student was me. Being undocumented has led me to have to learn to navigate the spaces in which I exist that were never meant for me. That's why I'm creating a late. Our mission is to dismantle the barriers that impact undocumented immigrant student success in post-secondary options by serving as a resource hub for post-secondary institutions in Colorado and creating empowering platforms for students to succeed. My vision is that students will be able to one day attend any institution and that each institution will openly provide the support and resources needed for students, regardless of their status, to not only exist, but to belong and thrive. My ask is to collaborate, become a partner, because the undocumented immigrant community needs a break. Our students need to just be students. They don't need to worry about their status, and the time has never been more crucial to do so than right now. Thank you. Hi, I'm Tresk Bell. Quick shout out to the Ednium team. I love and appreciate y'all. Um, it's time that we build a shared positive vision for the future of education in Denver. There are about 5,000 students who graduate from EPS every year. And we have successful and brilliant alumni who come from the same historically marginalized communities that are often spoken about, but never spoken with. Recent alumni are the, not only the direct outcome of the education system, often we're the bridge to social mobility for our families and communities. We are the ones that were reading the government papers for our families at age seven. We are, the, we are the ones helping our siblings overcome the obstacles that we just overcame. We are the ones who are holding the weight of generational change on our shoulders. We have too much talent at home to continue to outsource solutions for our communities and schools. So any of the alumni collective reinvest in the brilliance of members' homegrown talent, the leadership training, advocacy infrastructure, and network development so that those with direct experience with the district can hold ownership of their stories and their solutions. We, really, we utilize the lived experience as a source of expertise to bring tangible and relevant student and family focused change for the, the leaders of tomorrow. We don't have time to move backwards. We don't have time to stay stagnant. Edmund is seeking funding and partnership to ensure that the success of every future Denver Public School alumni is because of, not in spite of, their educational experience. Thank you. That was fantastic. Now I just want to invite all of cohort four that just pitched to come back on stage so we can recognize you and give you all a hand clap. 
You did a fantastic job. So don't be shy. Come on, guys. Off, put your cameras on. Come off mute so we can celebrate each other. So great job, everybody. Woo! All right. Um, Tony, feel free to come on backstage on stage now because we're getting to one of Cohort's favorite parts of the night. Might be my favorite part. All right, here we go. All right, now here's the part probably everybody's been waiting for. It's time to fill those lovely moonshot tumblers up because that are that is all of our pitches, and it's time for us to time for you to get your drink of choice and raise them for a toast. This cohort has been working all semester on perfecting their ideas and pitches. Cohort four has talked to dozens and dozens of students and families led pilots in the community communities they will serve and engaged in almost get this 130 hours of professional development so we must cheers to that so raise your glasses and it is time for cheers cheers to you all yeah. takes your sip yes and hey, wait it's been 130 hours okay so Let's give a little bit of behind the scenes. I think folks attending tonight need to hear a little bit about what this looks virtually. Okay, so usually after our jobs, uh, we'll have a four hour training Thursday evenings, and then sometimes we have them all day on the weekends. And so as we all know, seeing a Zoom invite on your calendar doesn't bring the happiest reaction. However, the minute we start and we check in by asking what's on our hearts and what's on our minds, I'm immediately engaged in the work to build our ventures and the community here that we've grown. And so by the end, many of us don't want to leave, leave the Zoom meeting. And that's not usually something you hear this uh, time in 2020. And so Jasmine, why not have a second cheers to all of the friends, families, funders, and community leaders who've made it possible for us to be part of this fellowship. Thank you for, for supporting Moonshot, for supporting us personally, and for coming here tonight to help us celebrate. One more cheers. One more cheers. Cheers to you all. All right. So I remember how blown away I was when I first heard many of my fellow cohort pitches during our group interviews and in our introductions. And I'm confident that by now, after hearing about all of our ventures, that you here in the audience feel similarly and you're optimistic for the opportunities that may soon be available for students here in Metro Denver. As Sharonda shared, the work is about the collective and what has made Moonshot Fellows so successful in the past is the broad support of a diverse collective of folks like yourselves. And this is where you all come in. Moonshot would not exist without the support of our incredible community members like yourself. We're asking you to support Moonshot and, and the fellows in one or more of the following ways. One, of course, you can give a donation to Moonshot. Your dollars, no matter how big or small, go to ensure Moonshot can support a cohort of 20 leaders just like cohort four and continue to so support the 70 plus Moonshot alumni as we launch and sustain our ventures. You can also network right here tonight with cohort four fellows, every connection, Every supporter is critical to our success in these beginning stages. Stop by a few tables and chat with the cohort for a fellow to learn more about our ventures to help disrupt the inequities in education that we all are fighting literally every day. And finally, you can follow Moonshot on Facebook and Instagram and subscribe to Moonshot newsletter to stay in the loop. So that was a lot, so let me recap. You can support Moonshot and the fellows in one of the three following ways. Donate, network with the cohort fellows tonight and stay connected with moonshot through our newsletter and social media it truly does take a village you all to disrupt these systems that are in place and we're trying to transform those every day and we need your help and last if you're having some fomo about not getting a celebration kit and these pretty classy moonshot tumblers don't worry you can still get one that's right jasmine sasha's putting the link in the chat and we'll also email it to you after the event. As soon as we're done pre 
presenting and we're almost finished, we will return to the regular floor plan on Remo, where you'll be able to double click on tables and um, be able to connect and talk to fellows who are sitting there vid via video chat. And once again, thank you so much for celebrating our ideas and engaging with us tonight. The chat's been amazing, as well as the discussion here at our tables. And remember, none of this is possible without the support of a strong community. And your attendance here tonight reminds us how amazing and how large our community really is. We hope you enjoyed the program tonight. And now we'll turn you loose to enjoy each other's company. Have fun networking. Thank you so much.